duck shit out here. But um, this is why we get in trouble, guys. You know that? I'm all pissed off right now. I am. I am pissed off. I'm like, I would have made money. I would have made money. All this is what we call hindsight. So we came up with this term called huru, H-U-R-U. It means a hindsight guru. Someone that's always, oh, I could have, should have. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. You know, always talks in the past. But that's that's the sort of thing that gets us in trouble. When we break a rule, you know, because we got rewarded like today. If I had stuck around, you know, trying to cherry pick the top and made money, you know, I wouldn't have made much. Maybe I'll make 25 cents. But the next time I'm going to lose $2. Just like yesterday. You know, that's the same thing. And so when, when this thing kind of happens, this is how bad habits form. Bad habits form when you're rewarded for bad actions. Sticking around, trying to cherry pick tops, trying to get $7 as a top, and then get rewarded for 20 cents, 25 cents, 50 cents, whatever it may be, right? Uh, very hard to hold for 50 cents when, when it's like, kind of like that, but you get rewarded for 25 cents. You know, so next time you stick your toe in, the fucking crocodile fucking turns you into a Louis Vuitton bag. You become the Louis Vuitton bag, not the alligator, right? When you're sticking your toe in there. So you have to be careful about being rewarded. So that's the thing we said yesterday, right? So I want to summarize really quickly, okay? The reason I, I'm, I'm walking around because I, I know myself. I know that, man, I, I'm very, very weak. I have very, it's like trading is like fun for me. But at the same time, I shouldn't treat it like entertainment. And so my, my thing is I'm, I'm usually, all, knock on wood, always up by 10 o'clock. By 10 a.m., I'm up. Today, I was up like four grand by 10 a.m. I'm like, fuck, I have too much cushion and too much fucking free time. What the fuck am I doing? So if I stuck to my process, I'd be happy with $3,000, $4,000 a day every day. And that's a great living. That's a fucking, you know, that's life-changing kind of money, right? That you can do realistically in a small account. In a $35,000 account, you can make $2,000 a day very consistently. Very, very consistently following this route. But when you make 2000 you want 3000 When you make 4000 you want 10000 And that's that's the circle of fucking greed that never ends in trading, guys. And this is how either people go broke, which is 90% of the time, or the few that make it, make it to astronomical levels. Now I look back and I'm like, well, I kind of did for a while make it to astronomical. But then there's a point where... It's like enough's enough. Where the fuck does it end? And then that's that's why people on Wall Street, the guys that make a shitload of money, they they become really desensitized to life and they become assholes. And that's a power money thing. Because if you take a look at the politicians, these guys have infinite money. Now they're after power, and power is not good enough. They need to humiliate other individuals and treat them horribly and control them like slaves and shit like that. And so that's the sort of culture that I don't want to preach into that shit, but. But you have to, you have to fucking find a connection between the numbers on the screen and humanity, and and if fucking making three thousand dollars in the first half an hour is not good enough for you, you got some serious fucking problem, which I have, <laughs> you know. So those are the things. It could be any type of number you want. You sitting on your ass making five hundred dollars, no stress every day, within half an hour, and it's still not good enough for you. You know, there's gonna be keep going. So basically. You know, you have to equate it to a lot of things. So this quarantine has actually helped because you can't really buy shit. And so when, you, when, when, you, when I look like, man, I'm like trying to look for just stupid shit on Amazon to buy to keep me, you know, motivated to keep working or do something. Because I, you know, you need kind of a reward system. I reward myself by going out and eating nice restaurants, you know, which is not going to make me go broke. I, I can never spend fucking $3,000 every day going to a restaurant, right? But at least I feel good when I go out and, you know, spend it. So now sitting around, these are just numbers on the screen, guys. There's no, there's no relating it back to humanity. 3,000, 10,000, 100, it's all the same fucking shit. Unless, you know, you have something to equate it. Like, oh shit, you're, you're, you can make a goal every week. Take some fucking money out, put in your kid's college fund, or whatever it may be. I'm just making it up, right? Whatever it may be, equate it. Otherwise, it's a video game that never ends. And that's, that's why I got burnt out back in the day. I got burnt out because there was a video game that never ended. Just when you thought you killed the final boss, there are like 25 more bosses that come along. And those are not even the final bosses. Those are just like the mid-man boss, right? So 
with that in mind guys this is how you grow as a trader as a human being as well so the community so people trading on their own is just yeah i mean there, there might be fucking a handful of guys that make it on their own guys i'm telling you right now it's very hard how many of you motherfuckers make it on your own it's rare the only reason i made it on my own is because you know what <laughs> i had a lot of money back in the day to keep funding my account most people do not privileged enough to keep funding their account seventy thousand dollars you know, some people fucking go broke after ten thousand dollars and never have the opportunity. If I didn't have a house back then and mortgage my house, I would not be here standing talking to you guys. And so I was very fortunate and blessed. And at the same time, looking back, I'm fucking stupid. I was stupid because I was young. I was maybe 27 years old. You know, make a lot of money. Dot, dot com as a developer, bought a house. Took equity out. <laughs> think, think it back. If I'm fucking sitting here now, I probably wouldn't do it because I'd have family obligations, have all that. But when I was young, I was able to take those risks, and so, so those risks translated out. But you know what? Not everybody has that opportunity. So we're sitting here with multiple generations of uh, mentors. Myself, now Alex and Tosh. Those guys are like 24 year old kids. How old are you, Alex? Like 24. And so we've run the full spectrum of life. So the older people, I guess I'm older now, can relate to me because I've gone through this stuff. They can't be a gunslinger like Alex. So Alex is now used to be like me back in the day where he had no obligations, no bills, just fending for himself. So what if he loses $50,000? So what? You know, he doesn't fucking what? He doesn't buy a new fucking car this year? <laughs> so, so those are the things you have to keep in mind. A lot of these guys, they, they, you know, if you're chasing just empty money, you have to understand that. There's a group of people out there that would be loving to be in your position where they make $500, you know, every day comfortably, not even in their job and trading wherever it may be, right guys? So, so sometimes I take these walks just to ground myself because when I realize like how stupid am I complaining, complaining about making $4,000 and pissed off because I saw CAPR tank 50 cents without me. It, it, it's just like, dude, it, it, you know, it's good and it's bad, as you can tell. I'm, I'm very fucking, you know, I'm very excited about trading and shit, but but I, it, it sets a bad tone. Because I, as a mentor of the chat room, I don't want people to be like myself sometimes. And so we have a great group of guys. Like, Alex is on the opposite spectrum. He's, it's fucking incredible. He's fucking, he nailed it for what, almost 10 grand a day. A stock that I was so, see, this is the thing that's funny. C, um, C-R-E-X is a low-hanging fruit. But it was a five cent locate. Here I am, fucking cheap as hell to pay five cents on a three dollar stock, not knowing if that thing will squeeze or not. So I passed it. Whereas Alex said, you know what, man, we're sticking to our process. We're sticking to our fucking strategies that we teach. And he nailed that shit where everybody else was just trying to dick around with CAPR. Sure, I made a bunch, of, you know, I made, I made, you know, a few grand on CPR, but you know what, man? Most people probably would have fucking lost if they shorted. I just happen to be a skilled trader who made money. But when I'm looking back, I'm like, what am I doing? It, it's like I avoided the easy setup, which we teach the low hanging fruit on CREX because that was cheap over five cents. He paid, Alex paid four, 8,000 shares, $400. And he made fucking like eight grand on that stock. Seven grand, whatever we made, right? And so like in hindsight, yeah, it's worth it. It's worth it because what? We, we have to follow what has made us successful, guys. Low hanging fruit, the easy setup. The hot chick of the day always, always gets my attention because I, I am at the point where, you know, this is more for fun than income. <laughs> and so it fucking feels good making three grand on CPR short side when everyone else is getting banged up. Whereas Alex just fucking, fucking made double, triple that you know playing our strategies so what does that lead me to that leads me to tell you guys this I, I posted a lot of things yesterday and it's all everything revolves around gambling guys i'm gonna end it like this before i bring alex on um if you treat day trading as an entertainment as a hobby as gambling you will lose you will lose alex does not treat it like that if you want to fucking have entertainment make money in the in the stock market Go out to a club. Go out to a fucking restaurant. Do whatever the hell you want to do. Go on Pornhub. I don't give a damn what you do, right? You can do whatever you want. But trading should not be entertainment. Trading is like blood sport, guys. 
You know what blood sport is? Like MMA, back before MMA, no rules hard, no 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 uh, rules barred, right? So so like blood sport was that uh, John Claude Van Damme, where people were fighting for their lives, and that's what it is. You, trading is fighting for your lives. There's a, we are very fortunate to be able to sit here, looking at our fucking fifteen hundred dollar iPhones, listening to me walk around a fucking pond. We are fucking blessed as fuck, you know. We're, for us, we are the fucking top of the blood sport level. Even though you think you're not, the fact that you're here looking at me means you you still have a Wi-Fi connection. You have food to eat. You have water to drink. So, you know, so treat it like that. If you really want to be successful at trading, guys, treat it not like entertainment. Treat it like, dude, this is blood sport. You're fighting for your fucking life here. If you want entertainment... Do something else. And so I, I, I'm trying to grasp that as well. Whereas Alex is helping me show him that, you know, look at that, man. He trades a fifth of my time and he makes double. Because I treat it like entertainment sometimes. And and so this is, you know, when I see these things about myself, I speak up. I'm not, I'm not, I'm trying to, you know, I'm not arrogant to think I'm the best, all this shit. Everybody has flaws. But my point is, look at the extreme side. Okay, the extreme side is I am, I think I'm okay trader. Uh, I probably is lack of discipline over trading all this shit. Because, you know, in the beginning, I was very disciplined because I had to. It was blood sport for me. Now it's more of like entertainment, which is the problem. And so, whereas Alex treats it like blood sport. Like, dude, I don't want to die. Whereas, oh, I have fucking nine lives. I can fucking lose one life today and, like, you know, live. And so, guys, trade. I don't know what the successful formula is. It, it's a balance in the, in the end between how much aggression and risk you put and how much discipline you have. But in the beginning, when you are limited capital, when you are learning, you must learn to be disciplined, to be consistent. Because you do not have nine lives to lose. Some of you don't even have one life to lose. So, so keep that in mind, guys. This is a serious fucking shit. We laugh, we joke, we make all these things. But at the end of the day, fuck, man, you're here to make money, right? And you, when we teach you all the tools, everybody knows the tools once they learn. It's, it's up to you to fully execute and follow the discipline. Okay? So I'm going to bring Alex on. Uh, I think I rambled enough. I just wanted to tell you guys, you know, this is not gambling. This is not entertainment. Uh, you know, I love doing this shit. But that is where my downfall is. A lot of times I bleed a lot of fucking games out for entertainment. Because that that's basically my entertainment. Do not do that, guys. You, most of you are not in the position to do that. Uh, I think I try to do. Uh, I try to get you on, Alex. For some reason, it's not working. You want to log off and log in again, Alex? With that said, what's the APR, guys? Give me a quote. I'm dying here. I'm fucking FOMO. <laughs> I just need to know. Yeah, uh, okay. Go live. It says Alex is unable to join. What's going on? You want to log off your account and come back on? It says Alex is unable to, to come on. Go live with Alex. Alex is unable to join. Okay. So weird, dude. Okay, go live. Okay. Oh, man, I feel so good with his haircut. Hey, is it, work? Work? is it working? Hey, it's working, brother. Uh, I must have been in like a bad Wi-Fi while I was walking. What's up, man? Oh, it feels good, man. Fucking new haircut. I like the I like the illegal haircut, man. <laughs> Bootleg. It's like Bro, pe people used to buy drugs. Now haircut is a new drug. I've never seen a barber have so much jewelry than Bow's barber. This guy's wearing a golden Rolex, three <laughs> gold rings, an iced out chain. The guy's making a shitload of money giving haircuts. <laughs> Dude, we had to book three people. That's the crazy shit for it to open up. It's like a private party, pit and friends. I love it, man. I love it. So let me let me kind of talk about a couple of things that you mentioned. Number one is 
Yeah, man. Trading, like you said, is a blood sport. Uh, the reason why uh, I treat it like that as well is because I know what it's like from early stages of my trading career to give back those gains. I know what it's like to make $5,000 and give away 3000 of it screwing around. And for you, the problem is that you love it so much that you screw around for purely the entertainment aspect. And you say the same thing all the time. You're like, bro, if I just didn't screw around, I would have an extra $2,000 a day. If I had an extra $2,000 a day, I would have an extra half a million dollars a year. So hearing that is the reason why I don't screw around. It's because I know that if we just walk away, we're going to end up making more money on the year because we're following the rules. Yep. Yes, look, the numbers don't lie, dude. The numbers do not lie. People always laugh about us making consistent three, four, five thousand dollars a day. But yeah. if you do the fucking math, dude, working one hour and you making half a million, two million dollars a year off of one hour and very low risk. Holy exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's like what we spoke about. So what I talk about now, because people don't understand, is what my account size is at. Everyone always says you need a million dollar account, a six figure account to make this type of money. But what I do is I use a thirty five thousand dollar account. And every time I get to fifty thousand dollars, I wire out fifteen. I started this week at thirty-five thousand. I got to fifty-one thousand on Wednesday. Wired out the money today, and tomorrow I'll be back to thirty-five. So it just goes to show that I'm still repeating the same fact. Because, like Bao said, if you are not relating it to the real world, if you are not at least uh, trying to attach it to something, you turn into these people that are desensitized from it. So seeing the numbers on the screen. It really means fucking nothing because I can't do anything with it if it's on the screen. But if we pull it out and we put it into our bank account, we start to realize, shit, man, my Chipotle is fifteen dollars a day, and I'm <laughs> you making would never, fucking. You, know, exactly, you would never exactly. be able to eat enough fucking Chipotle. That's exactly, weird, man. I, I I love the fact that you're spending on yourself. But, but the stupidity is, I'm trying to save five cents on a low case. <laughs> yeah. like, what the fuck, you know? Let me talk really about bad. that as well. So, yeah. so I actually, in the morning, in the morning, me, Bao, and Tosh, like we share our plans in the morning as tabs. We tell each other what we're looking for. And I was telling Bao that, you know, I'm interested in oh, shorting by the, the stock. Oh, by the way, these, these plans are all in your watch list. It's not like we have any Correct. private fucking Correct. plans. Correct. So. Correct. I post the watch list, and then we review it all together to make sure that everything is symmetrical and cohesive. Because if me and Bao have the same plan, it usually means that shit is going to be right. But if one of us is kind of off, it makes us double think it and look back at it too. Um, so today on CE, uh, on the stock, it was pushing up pre-market towards 470. And I thought to myself, shit, if this breaks $5, it's probably going to keep going higher. But what ended up happening is during pre-market, it started to walk down and it went red. When a stock goes red, that triggers something in the mind of longs to start taking profits, right? So that's kind of the first signal that I saw that made me interested in the stock. The next thing was it broke through yesterday's support. So now at this point, it is red. People don't care about it. And we have a new stock, Cap R, that is running. So that is taking attention away from the stock that I'm watching. So all of these little things are fitting together that's telling me, all right, while people are watching Cap R, while some people like Bao don't want to pay for the locate, that's to my advantage because there's going to be less eyeballs, less attention. So if it pops, I'm going to take advantage of it. And that's basically what I did. Yep. I avoided cap R like the plague. I purposely did not locate it so that I was not tempted. And although I paid $400 for this stupid uh, CETX locate or CREX locate, it was still more valuable than anything else. It's like, it's like you say, bro, we're, we're out here yep. spending hundreds on locates, but we forget how to equate that in the real world. $400 is what you pay at a fucking club, right? It's a waste of money. You pay that at a club. But in trading four hundred dollars like that, it goes away. So that's also something that we have to keep in mind as well. But but look at all the strategies that you overlap. You talked about first day red. Yeah. You talked about breaking and fucking support, and yep. you're talking about the fact that it's no longer the hot chick of the day. Correct. Which which means what? Less volume. So when volume dies, these stocks start to trickle off. Yep. If you look at Cap R, I think when I left the office, it was at like seventy million volume on eleven million share float, which means that it rotated float seven times in approximately two or three hours. Meanwhile, all these other stocks are broken. They're red. They're tanking. They're this, they're that. So for us, bro, we're looking for the trades that make us the most amount of money with the least amount of stress. And that is always the low hanging fruit, never the day one play. So while everyone is losing their ass on the day one plays, we're focusing on the stocks that people forget about.
And that's yep. where our edge comes in. And I, for, I forgot to talk about the A, B, C, D, E pattern. And after I talk about that, <laughs> then we can continue. Because this is the main thing. So I, I, the reason this A, B, C, D fucking pattern comes coming up is because I am subscribed to multiple chat rooms. I'm hearing all these guys talking about A, B, C, D. I'm like, what the fuck is A? What, how do you fucking calculate B? What, like C, a C yeah. for cock? Or a D yeah. for dumb or dick? You know what I'm saying? Like, yep. so there, and so those patterns... You can see those patterns in you fucking stock. Oh, that's a So yeah. the only way that people go, oh, they educate you on guruism. Hindsight guru, okay? So I can look back at a play and go, here's A, here's B, but how do you calculate that? So yep. with MIC, actually, I, wanna keep, I don't want to talk about MIC, cause, but fuck. We, 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 we don't talk about A, B, C, D. What we do is we tell you the exact line that A is on. Then we tell you the exact line that B is on. Then we tell you the line that C is on. And you decide whether or not it's A, B, C, D or A, B, C, fuck or A, B, C, D or whatever the fuck you want to do. Exactly. Exactly. We, we pre-plan everything, right? So if you look at this morning's watch list, every single trade is planned. The lines are planned. Everything is planned. All you have to do is make sure that your plans are similar or compare your plans. Make your watch list in the morning. Compare the plan. DM me if you have questions and we work through it together. That's what we do. We always pre-plan everything so that we're never a deer in headlights no matter what happens. Everything is there. We just react. So we, so I actually calculated where that C value is on these A, B, C, D. And I told members a long time before we got there that $6.20 was that fucking exact line. And sure enough, when that broke the six twenty, it went ballistic to seven twenty. How do we know that? I'm going to give you the secret. The secret is because of the lines. I was actually channel trading over and over the six twenty line to the five eighty line. And so there was a pattern that naturally comes out. Yep. And, and people don't understand it. They go, oh, A, B, C, D. No, dude, it's all in the line. The resistance yep. line was at 620. The fucking support was at 580. So there's your A and your B. And the C is the break of the resistance. And so and it, and it coincided with what? The zombie hour. Exactly. The fucking that's, zombie hour. So that's the rule that saves us millions of dollars, man. It took us six figures seven figures to learn this rule that was the secret piece that you that we were missing this entire time that you mentioned yesterday as well it's about knowing when to stand up and walk away because the longer you are from the screen the longer you sit at the table the more odds you have of the fucking house taking all your money so when i make my money i am petrified to give it back that's why i walk away yep and it also saves you mental capital of you know course, you know man. why I, you know why i fucked up on crx this is this how this is probably the truth okay because I made money on CRX in the morning. I dipped my toe back and gave half of the gains back, right? Yep. Right at zombie hour. Now yep. my mental capital is not recovered. I'm still fucking scared. Yeah. So and you're pissed. And, and I'm pissed. I'm scared. So I decided today not to go back to the bully that beat me. Whereas Alex didn't get beat up yesterday. He remained calm and he fucking nailed that shit today. Yeah. So breaking rules not only loses money capital. It loses mental capital. And yep. mental capital is what keeps you going in day trading, guys. You can have yep. the best system in the world, but if you're not confident about that, you will never execute or you will be petrified. And so what I did today for my own sake is to avoid that bully that beat me. Even though he didn't really beat me, I was scared because I fucked up. Yep. And so by doing that, I went and made money on different stock. And now my mental capital has been regained. Right. I now trust my system. I can go back tomorrow not being scared anymore. Yep. That's it, man. That's it. That's why I say to everyone, it's like the reason why I do nail and bail, the reason why I walk away, the reason why I'm so scared and stay safe, so loyal to the zombie rule is because I know that if I am not stressed on Monday, I'm not going to be stressed on Tuesday. If I'm stressed on Tuesday, it's going to pour into Wednesday. So the less stress I have actually yields to more money because I'm more focused and more in the zone. Today, I didn't attack cap R. I didn't even locate it. Tomorrow, you better believe that I'm going to be all over it with a clear head because I'm not trading on emotion with it today. Yep. And you didn't get beat up. So same thing with me. I left. Thank God I left to do this IG Live. It went yeah. to 720, whatever it may be. You did a great job walking away, bro. Great job. Uh, all I'm losing is, is FOMO. And, yeah. You know? So what? If I, I, if, what's a few hundred bucks or a thousand dollars? Exactly, bro. Exactly. If, you know, but if I lost it, they may cripple me for the next day. And, exactly. And I hear this a lot from uh, brokers, right? They see great traders, okay? Great traders making money consistently until they take a bad beat. One yep. bad trade kind of broke their account. But more importantly, it's not the money. 
it, it broke their mind. It broke their confidence. They, ne they were never able to regain it. And that's the mental capital like we keep talking about. Because confidence, same thing with NBA players, same thing with Major League Baseball. They have psychiatrists that treat when you go through slumps. Even the biggest guys, like Michael Jordan had a slump that he had to go yeah. through. You know what I'm saying? Everybody has a We all go through it, man. You go through it. I go through it. We all go through it, man. I was going through it before my Tesla trade. I remember a couple months back, I was doubting everything. That's right. That's right. It's the same thing, man. It's the same thing. It doesn't matter what level you're at, even if you're a professional, LeBron James, Michael Jordan, whoever the fuck it is, after a certain point, it happens. The key is to have a community around you that has been through it before, that understands your struggles, that can help pick you back up again. Yep. Yep. And I'm telling you, man, some people do not recover. And that's why we stress all the time about these rules. These rules not only save you money, guys, it saves you mental capital. Because some people, when you re recover mentally, confidence yeah. is gone. Yeah. And, you know, I've seen this so many times in, in very good traders who, who gamble a few times and now they, they don't know what the fuck to do, you know? And, and so, exactly. all right, man, with that said, uh, we, we you know, talk about the toss. So every, every Wednesday, guys, this is new. So before we, we started Wednesday as a, as a uh, new member orientation with Tosh, but then we started opening it up to all you guys. So... All you guys can now attend for free, where Tosh will take you through the ins and outs of MIC and actually shows you one of the chat rooms that we were live trading. So we've been live trading the past two times. And we, <laughs> I, made, uh, I made money last week. Uh, Zoom was huge the week before. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, let me, let me kind of give a little bit more on it. So every Wednesday at 2 p.m. market time, we post the, the new member webinar, the look inside MIC, the whatever you want to call it at 2 p.m. on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash my investing club. This is basically your eyes and ears into a day in the life of MIC. Ash walks you through the website. He walks you through the platform, walks you through some of our trades, walks you through everything, all the perks, benefits, and features. And then at the end of it, we open it up to a Q and a open to everyone. So this is again, every Wednesday at 2 p.m. I was going to be there. I'm going to be there. Tosh is going to be there. Joe's going to be there. Uh, so if you have any questions, Join that webinar on Wednesday, today at 2. Uh, and that's it, man. That's it. Uh, and if you stay, you know, we usually give some sort of uh, surprise bonuses or specials as well. Correct. You know, Correct. so maybe you'll get a free t-shirt or something. I don't know. We haven't talked Correct. about it yet. So. Correct. What we do is for the people that stay till the very end, the people that put in the work and watch, we give you guys a special code, which you can then text to Tosh. And we'll give you kind of like a specialized uh, bonus or something. Well, we'll kind of work with you to see what where you're kind of lacking in your trading, how, how we could kind of help you guys. Yep. That's good, man. And, and cool. uh, oh, one more thing. You want to tease about that, that DVD is coming up? Or we call it the accelerator? You want to talk about it? Yeah, so, or we wait yeah. until Tasha's seminar. Let's wait until Tasha's webinar. Yeah, we can talk about it at Tasha's seminar. But basically, long story short, is expect a release hopefully by the end of next week. That's what we can wow. say for now. That's like an early. That's good. Hopefully, hopefully. Yeah, we uh we beta tested this with how many people now? It's been you know it's been working it's very been, well. It's been we've been beta testing it for about a month, a month and a half. So what we do is we like to give early access to the accelerator course to lifetime members to get their feedback to see if it's all cohesive. They've had some really good ideas, really good edits. So we've been kind of working right now to edit it and fix it to be kind of ready for mass release. Awesome guys. So we'll see you at two PM market time. It's gonna be on Zoom. On Tosh's Twitter, I'm gonna post that as well, and, and on YouTube, and on our YouTube channel. Free to subscribe, My Investing Club, on the YouTube channel. All right, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks.